Welcome, enthusiasts. Today we're embarking on an in-depth exploration of powdery mildew, a persistent and frustrating fungal disease that has challenged growers for centuries. From its historical discovery and scientific milestones to its impact on cannabis plants and the strategies that can be used to prevent and manage it, we'll cover it all. Along the way, we'll provide practical tips, preventative measures, and safe treatments to ensure your cannabis plants stay healthy and productive. But before we get started, please take a moment to support our channel by hitting that like button and make sure to subscribe if you're interested in more insightful and engaging content like this. And as always, please remember that this is an educational video and that any information provided is for educational purposes only. Now, let's embark on this enlightening journey together. The scientific discovery of powdery mildew in the 18th and 19th centuries represents a significant milestone in the field of plant pathology and mycology. While this type of mildew likely plagued plants for thousands of years, its formal recognition as a fungal disease began with the advent of microscopes and the systematic study of plant health. In 1819, Christian Hendrik Persoon, a pioneering French mycologist, made early strides in fungal taxonomy and his research laid the groundwork for categorizing and describing fungi. Prasoon's observations, though foundational, were later refined by scientists who further classified the genus Erysiphe. The mid-1800s marked a pivotal moment in the scientific and agricultural understanding of powdery mildew and would forever alter Europe's approach to crop protection. Around 1845, this disease, which is believed to have originated in North America, finally made its way to Europe, likely carried on imported plant material, just seven years later, by 1851, the fungus had already infiltrated nearly all of Europe's grape-growing regions. This unwelcome invader found a perfect host in Europe's prized vineyards, and its rapid spread underscored the interconnectedness of global agriculture at a time when such risks were poorly understood. The consequences of the outbreak were nothing short of catastrophic. By 1854, powdery mildew had decimated France's wine production by a staggering 80% compared to the previous year. This dramatic decline sent shockwaves through the agricultural community, prompting an urgent need for solutions. Among the most significant responses to this crisis was the development of sulfur-based fungicides. Sulfur had been used in various forms for centuries, but its targeted application to combat powdery mildew represented a groundbreaking shift toward modern plant disease management. This milestone not only curbed the spread of the disease, but also laid the foundation for the systematic study of fungal pathogens. By the late 19th century, the scientific community began to understand the life cycle, environmental preferences, and modes of transmission of powdery mildew, advancing both the field of mycology and the practical approaches to plant health. Now that we've delved into the history of powdery mildew, let's shift our focus to understanding its fundamentals. This fungus is a common disease that affects a wide range of plants, including cannabis. It is caused by several species of fungi, most notably from the genus Golovinomyces and Erysiphe. This disease thrives in specific environmental conditions, particularly when humidity is high and the air circulation is poor. As mentioned earlier, powdery mildew in particular is notorious for its ability to spread rapidly and for its resilience, making it a significant challenge for cannabis cultivators. The life cycle for this disease is a continuous process that enables the fungus to infect plants, reproduce, and spread to new hosts. Understanding this illness is essential for effective management and prevention. The powdery mildew disease cycle begins when fungus spores, known as conidia, land on the surface of a host plant. These conidia are often carried by air currents, water splashes, tools, and human activity. Once on the plant, the spores germinate if the environmental conditions are favorable, typically with humidity above 50% and temperatures ranging between 60 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. After germination, the fungal spores produce thread-like structures called hyphae. These hyphae penetrate the plant's outer tissue but not the deeper cells, as powdery mildew is an obligate parasite. Using specialized structures called haustoria, the fungus siphons nutrients from the host plant to fuel its growth. As the fungus colonizes the plant, it produces more spores on the surface of the infected tissue. These spores form the characteristic white, powdery coating that gives the disease its name. 
In the early stages, the disease typically begins as small, white, or gray powdery spots on the upper surfaces of leaves. These spots can grow and merge, eventually forming a continuous layer of fungal growth. While it is most noticeable on leaves, powdery mildew can also affect stems, and in severe cases, the buds themselves. Infected leaves may also show signs of yellowing or wilting as the disease progresses. Over time, the infection will begin to reduce the plant's ability to photosynthesize, causing weakened growth, yellowing leaves, and eventual tissue death. The effects of powdery mildew on cannabis plants are especially troubling for growers, as the disease doesn't just impact the leaves and stems, it can spread to the buds. Once the buds are infected, the plant becomes unsuitable for consumption, as fungal contamination poses serious health risks. To make matters worse, powdery mildew spores are airborne, allowing the disease to spread quickly and easily to nearby plants. Preventing powdery mildew starts with creating an environment that actively discourages fungal growth. This means addressing the conditions that allow the disease to thrive, such as high humidity, moderate temperatures, and poor airflow. By managing these factors, growers can significantly reduce the risk of infection and protect their cannabis plants from this persistent threat. Humidity control is one of the most crucial aspects of prevention. Powdery mildew spores can germinate and spread rapidly, so maintaining relative humidity below 50% is essential. Cannabis growers often use dehumidifiers, ventilation systems, and hygrometers to monitor and adjust humidity levels. Equally important is temperature management. Keeping the grow room within an optimal range for cannabis plants while avoiding extended periods of these moderate temperatures can help reduce this risk. Air circulation is another key factor in preventing powdery mildew. Stagnant air creates microclimates around plant surfaces. Growers can prevent this by spacing plants adequately, pruning excess foliage to improve airflow, and using oscillating fans to ensure consistent air movement throughout the grow area. These measures also help prevent the accumulation of spores and reduce the likelihood of infection spreading from plant to plant. Sanitation and hygiene are also fundamental for disease and pest management prevention. Spores can linger on tools, pots, and surfaces, so regular cleaning of equipment and grow areas is essential. Many growers sterilize their tools before and after use, ensuring that spores are not inadvertently transferred during plant care. Additionally, removing plant debris and other organic matter from the grow area eliminates potential reservoirs for fungal growth. Preventative treatments can also provide an extra layer of protection for plants. Many cannabis growers apply natural foliar sprays such as neem oil, potassium bicarbonate, or sulfur-based products. These substances create an inhospitable environment for fungal spores, thereby reducing the risk of infection. However, caution is necessary when applying treatments, especially during the flowering stage, to avoid affecting the bud's quality or safety. Also, selecting resistant cannabis strains is another proactive strategy. Strains such as Blue Dream, OG Kush, Northern Lights, and Sour Diesel have been bred for enhanced resistance to powdery mildew, making them a better choice for growers in regions where the disease is prevalent. While resistance is not a guarantee of immunity, it can significantly reduce the chances of infection. Now, if we are past the point of prevention and there is a current infestation, getting rid of powdery mildew on cannabis plants requires prompt action as the fungal disease can quickly spread. The approach to managing and removing the fungus varies depending on the growth stage, as treatments must be effective yet safe for the plant and its eventual use. Let's explore how to handle powdery mildew during both the vegetative and flowering stages. During the vegetative stage, plants are more resilient to treatments, making it easier to manage and remove powdery mildew. Start by inspecting plants thoroughly and identifying infected areas. Carefully remove and dispose of infected leaves or stems to prevent the fungus from spreading further. Ensure that the discarded material is sealed in a bag and taken far from the grow area, as spores can easily become airborne. Next, apply an appropriate treatment to eliminate the fungus. In the vegetative stage, organic and chemical fungicides are generally safe to use. Options include neem oil, sulfur-based sprays, or potassium bicarbonate solutions. These treatments disrupt the growth of powdery mildew and create an inhospitable environment for the fungus. Baking soda solutions are a popular DIY remedy that alters the pH on leaf surfaces, preventing fungal development. 
For a more natural approach, biological treatments such as Bacillus subtilis or Trichoderma can combat the fungus without harming the plant. Growers will make sure that treatments are applied evenly and consistently on all plant surfaces, including the undersides of leaves, where the fungus often thrives. Moving on to the flowering stage, powdery mildew can present cultivators with a whole new list of additional challenges. Treating the fungus during this phase must be done cautiously to avoid affecting the bud's quality or safety. Removing infected material remains the first step. Prune affected leaves or parts of stems carefully, ensuring no fungal debris lands on nearby plants or buds. For treatments during flowering, avoid using harsh chemicals or oils, as these can damage the buds and leave residues harmful to consumers. Instead, use safer alternatives like a diluted hydrogen peroxide solution or a milk spray, both of which can combat fungal growth without compromising the buds. Another option is to carefully use UVC light as it can kill spores on contact. However, UVC must be used sparingly to avoid damaging the plant tissue. Whether in the vegetative or flowering stage, it's essential to monitor plants regularly after treatments to ensure the infestation is not returning. By combining physical removal, targeted treatments, and improved environmental control, powdery mildew can be effectively managed and eliminated, preserving the health and productivity of cannabis plants throughout their growth cycle. Thank you for joining us on this comprehensive journey into the world of powdery mildew and its impact on cannabis plants. By understanding the biology of powdery mildew and its relationship with environmental factors, Growers can take proactive measures to protect their crops and ensure healthy, productive harvests. If you found this video helpful, please show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel. Your engagement helps us bring more valuable content to the cannabis community. If you have any questions, insights, or experiences with powdery mildew, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay curious.